Right now, new information about a violent attack this past weekend that sent a UW student to the hospital and how you can help police find who's responsible. Kids returned to class across the Madison Metropolitan School District today, but some of the buses responsible for getting them to school were late and by more than just a few minutes. And the former leader of the Proud Boys receives the longest prison sentence of any January 6th defendant so far. I'll tell you how long a judge is locking him up for. It's all ahead on News 3 Now at 10. Today marked the first day of school for the Madison District, but the year didn't get off to a great start for everyone. Some students were forced to wait for 30, 40, and even over 60 minutes for their school bus because buses were delayed this morning. Arman Rahman heard from some of those parents and went to the bus company for answers. That's right, guys. It's not just the first week of the school year. It's the first week that first student. Madison School's new contracted bus company is transporting kids, but parents say what happened was not acceptable. The district informed us there would be a delay. When Jason Kennedy got that email Monday night, he prepared his daughter to wait a few minutes longer for her bus to Senate Middle School. But the bus ended up being over two hours late. Um, the scheduled time was initially 8:04, then with a you know a few minutes delay, but a actual van or maybe a short bus came that was not the real bus um, at 10:20. Some neighbors in the area took his daughter to school after an hour went by. She was visibly upset when she arrived. Many other parents posted about delays on social media, like Jessica we Payne, whose I son also goes to Senate. Then half an hour before school got out, another email from the district that buses also would be delayed coming home. And. If possible, we recommend finding alternate accommodations for your student. I'm fortunate enough that I could flex my work schedule and go pick him up and come back home and work from here, but not every parent has that option. She is one of many parents who contacted the district. I'm sure the district is sick of getting calls from parents um, about it when it's not really in their control. She also contacted the bus company first student. So did I. In a statement, they tell us the new school year is always an adjustment, especially as a new bus company. They said they have brought in highly trained drivers from other locations to, quote, remain on staff as we continue to onboard new drivers. But over two hours for one bus stop, that's, that's not okay. Parents say they want more of a commitment from first student and MMSD that this won't keep happening. I mean, I think right now we're just being, you know, trying to find a ride to school until we know what's being resolved. We'll see what tomorrow looks like. First student is also still hiring drivers for MMSD because they say moving to a two-tier transportation system increased the number of routes. Starting wages went up this year to $24 an hour with a $3,000 signing bonus. Well, we made it through the heat of the holiday weekend and finally cooler weather is on the way. Jacob Montesano on the patio today with the upcoming changes in his first warrant forecast. Jacob? Yeah, we can hopefully possibly even say goodbye to the 90s for the rest of the year because the foreseeable future is looking a lot cooler than the last couple of days. And looking at the current temperatures, our entire area well cooler than the 90s that we saw the last few days with much of our area already in the 70s, some areas still hanging on to the 80s. But looking at the dew points, it is still pretty humid out. And during the overnight hours, it is going to be pretty muggy with low temperatures only around 70 degrees. Now, earlier in the day, we did see warm temperatures, but not as warm as the last couple of days. We struggled to get to 90 today, especially around Madison with high with high temperature of only 87. But Prairie du Chien, Bell, and Janesville, you folks got to 90, and the humidity was a little higher than the last couple of days, so the heat index values were pretty similar to what we saw throughout Labor Day weekend. Now, if we look at the current radar, we are seeing some storms develop off to the south and west. If we zoom further out, there's a line of storms across Iowa. Now, this is expected to move into our area, but once it enters Wisconsin, it's going to dissipate a little bit as it moves off to the north and east, where not our, not our entire area will see storms tonight. I'll talk more in detail about this later, but some of the storms could possibly be severe because we have a we have a marginal risk for our entire area that's level one out of five. Now we're not expected to see widespread severe weather, but a storm or two could possibly produce a severe thunderstorm warning. I'll have more details on this a little bit later in the show. Well, Jacob, thank you. We are learning new details about that attack over the weekend that left a UW student hospitalized with severe injuries. Police say the woman in her 20s was physically and sexually assaulted. That woman hospitalized in critical condition. She is expected to survive. 
As of this moment, no arrests have been made. Investigators are now asking people who live in the areas between West Wilson and South Bedford streets to share any surveillance video with police that may have captured the attack. If you have any videos or photos that could help police identify a suspect, you're asked to call the Madison Police Non-Emergency Dispatch Line. That number right there on your screen, 608-255-2345. If you haven't seen this video, take a look. Yesterday, a pier at UW-Madison collapsed with between 60 and 80 people standing on it. One person went to the hospital and dozens of others had cuts and scratches. The remains of the pier are now gone after cleanup crew spent the day removing it from Lake Mendota. Plans were already in motion to remove the pier today to mark the end of the summer season, the day after Labor Day. Madison Fire was involved with the rescue operations yesterday, and one lieutenant shared with us the severity of that rescue call. It could have been a lot worse. You know, again, we were fortunate to know that everybody was accounted for because putting our divers into an environment like that where, um, where the structure is collapsed on itself and intertwined is very dangerous for our divers. We also reached out to the university, but we were told no one would speak about the collapse on camera. Madison Mayor Satya Rhodes-Conway unveiling her 2024 executive capital budget, touting big investments for the city's south side. Speaking this morning at the Urban League's new black business hub, Mayor Rhodes-Conway said the new budget will help bring a vision developed by the city and south side residents into reality. The vision includes over $27 million for new housing, economic development initiatives, and a new fire station near the intersection of Badger Road at Park Street. We want people to feel welcomed. We want people to feel safe and, and like this is a center of activity because there is a lot going on. The new budget would boost funds for affordable housing by 60% over four years and nearly $20 million over six years for buyers to purchase and refurbish aging homes and give property tax relief to senior citizens so they can stay in their homes. Governor Tony Evers defending his office for not having any formal policies restricting supervisors from engaging in romantic relationships with staffers. Both houses of the legislature, the UW system, and many other employers do have strict guidelines in place that prohibit relationships between supervisors and subordinates. But the governor doesn't require his employees to be held to similar standards. Of the 30 or so employees who work for Evers, it recently became known his chief of staff, Maggie Gao, is dating a senior employee who she directly supervises. Governor Evers says the relationship shouldn't concern anyone, even though some labor attorneys say it could lead to claims of sexual harassment, favoritism, or other workplace disruptions. I base my analysis of what their worth is to the governor's office on their performance, not who they're married to, who they're not married to, or anything. And so I think we can get by without, a, without a, some sort of uh, thing that invades people's privacy. It's as simple as that. Many other employees who work at the Capitol are subject to strict guidelines. The Assembly and Senate's policy says any relationship between supervisors and subordinates are not allowed. The Wisconsin DNR is acquiring 1,800 acres of land in southern Jefferson County to expand Prince's Point Wildlife area. The site is currently managed as a muck farm and sits adjacent to the wildlife area. Once added to the site, the wildlife area will nearly double in size. Work will begin on wetland restoration later this year and is expected to be fully complete as early as 2025. Turning now to national news, 22 years. That's how long former chairman of the Proud Boys Enrique Tarrio will go to prison for in his role in the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol. Well, that's the longest sentence handed down to any of the January 6 defendants so far, but not as long as the government wanted. It requested a 33-year sentence. Tario was convicted earlier this year of seditious conspiracy. While he wasn't physically in D.C. during the attack after being banned by the city, prosecutors say he helped orchestrate much of it from Baltimore. His sentence four years longer than that of Stuart Rhodes, the founder of Oath Keepers, who up until today had been given the longest prison sentence for January 6th at 18 years. The Capitol Hill attending physician says he doesn't think Senate Min Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has suffered a stroke or seizure. The note from Dr. Brian Monahan comes after the 81-year-old Republican froze on camera last week for the second time in two months. It also says the Kentuckian shows no evidence of a movement disorder like Parkinson's. Senator McConnell's freeze caught a lot of people's attention, something he himself acknowledged while addressing the Senate today, back from a five-week recess. Now, one particular moment of my time back home has received its fair share of attention in the press over the past week. But I assure you, August was a busy and productive month 
for me and my staff. Well, Senator McConnell's doctor says people who have suffered a concussion can feel lightheaded at times. That backs up a claim from Senator McConnell's office and follows the minority leader's fall in March. United Airlines planes are back in the skies tonight after an hours-long ground stop this afternoon. The FAA issued an alert that United Airlines was delaying all flights nationwide due to a computer equipment issue. Fortunately for thousands of air travelers, the ground stop was lifted about a little over an hour later. Flights that were already airborne continued to their final destinations as planned. A United spokesperson says a software update was to blame. In Atlanta, 61 protesters and activists have been indicted on racketeering charges. Of those 61, four are Wisconsin residents. They are part of a movement to stop construction of a planned public safety training center, which they call Cop City in a forested area. Georgia's Attorney General says most of the defendants are from out of state. Two of the Wisconsin residents indicted are from Madison. Some of the protesters have engaged in violence, including throwing Molotov cocktails, and a 26-year-old protester was killed in January after state troopers say he fired at them. Georgia officials describe the group as an anarchist, anti-police, and anti-business extremist organization. As more and more states legalize marijuana, some people are finding themselves dependent on the drug. Still ahead of 10, there's new research into a drug that helps people curb their intake of marijuana. If the trial proves successful, it could lead to pharmacological treatments. Stay with us. Dear Freedom, here's to more miles driven, more dollars saved, and more electrified vehicles than any other brand. Yours, Toyota Hybrids. Toyota. Let's go places. Elevate your savings at the Century House. Right now, buy stressless recliners, sofas, and office chairs, and earn up to $1,500 credit toward the purchase of additional stressless furniture. Or receive $400 off the purchase of any stressless signature base or cross base recliner in Ottoman. Don't wait. Shop the Century House. 3420 University Avenue in Madison. Progress means producing renewable fuels for trucks on the road today. We're partnering with farmers to develop these fuels using everything from plant byproducts to cow manure. And then using those fuels to help lower the life cycle carbon intensity of the transportation industry. Driving the world forward today while forging new roads to the future. That's energy in progress. right here with you. Save big money and get 11% off everything at Menards. Upgrade your home with quality appliances from brands including Criterion, KitchenAid, Maytag, Whirlpool, and Amana. Menards has the largest in-stock appliance selection ready to take home today. Get this fingerprint-resistant stainless steel Whirlpool appliance suite and save over $1,800 after sale price and 11% rebate. Get 11% off everything right now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Dear Freedom, here's to more miles driven, more dollars saved, and more electrified vehicles than any other brand. Yours, Toyota Hybrids. Toyota, let's go places. Charles Barkley will have you holler. People think when you go out in public, you have to talk to them. They're like, what are you doing at the supermarket? I'm shopping, fool. <laughs> Plus, his secret to basketball success. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Well, there's a traffic situation you need to know about starting tomorrow. In the morning, South Broom Street will fully close from West Wilson over to John Nolan Drive. Construction has already closed the inbound lanes, but now the outbound lanes will also close beginning at 6 a.m. Outbound traffic in South Bassett will need to detour on West Doty to North Bedford to North Shore Drive. That closure expected to last a week and a half, reopening by next Saturday, September 16th. 
Topping tonight's Health Watch, doctors may soon have new technology to diagnose autism in children more quickly and accurately. Those are the findings from two studies released today which suggest an eye-tracking tool could diagnose autism in children as young as 16 months old. The device is called Early Point Evaluation and was recently cleared by the FDA to help clinicians intervene earlier than ever before. Early detection can lead to treatment approaches which help improve outcomes for children with the developmental disability. Marijuana is the most commonly used drug in the country. Many studies have focused on the potential medicinal benefits. But new research looks at a drug that curbs marijuana use for those who have become dependent on it. A study being conducted by a Miami Medical Clinic is using is, a fa is assessing the efficacy, safety, and tolerability of an investigational drug in reducing cannabis use disorder. Estimates show about 16 million people had cannabis use disorder in 2021. The risk of developing dependence is higher for people who started using marijuana during adolescence. There is this thought that people can't be addicted to marijuana. It affects their function, it affects their work, it affects their learning, it affects their relationships. Well, some participants received the drug, others received a placebo. All participants paid $2,000 upon completion of the study, which lasts for 20 weeks. There's currently no approved pharmacological treatments for people who have cannabis use disorder. This drug would be the first. A Colorado police officer helped save the life of a man trapped inside a car on fire over the weekend, captured here on dash cam. Longmont, Colorado officer Justin Hill responded to a single vehicle crash early Saturday morning. Three people were inside that car. Two men were able to get out, but the third person was stuck. When Officer Hill arrived, he joined to help them remove the third person from the vehicle. It took a little over two minutes for the man to be freed after Officer Hill arrived, and he was rescued just in time. 45 seconds later, that car was fully engulfed in flames. And watch this. It is not every day you capture a rock slide right in front of you. This is from near Gatlinburg, Tennessee. A group of friends had gathered at a roadside parking lot to enjoy a picnic when they suddenly heard falling rocks and began recording. Well, soon enough, the entire mountainside comes down just feet from where they parked their cars. Fortunately, no one was hurt. New at 10, Disney's adding a sixth cruise liner to its fleet of ships set to sail the seas beginning late next year. Here's a look at what the inside of the ship will look like. The cruise ship will be called the Disney Treasure. Some of the amenities already announced include a ride called Aqua Mouse, which takes guests through the world of Mickey Mouse animated shorts, an ice cream parlor inspired by Disney's Zootopia, and a theatrical dining experience themed to the Disney Disney and Pixar film Coco. This ship will take guests on seven nights cruises beginning December of 2024. The chicken sandwich wars continue. Shake Shack now spicing things up with its new hot menu. Its nationwide hot menu launch includes a new spicy Shackmeister burger, spicy fries, spicy cheese fries, and of course the hot chicken sandwich. The fourth time Shake Shack has brought it back due to demand. The sandwich is technically launched Friday, but you can try them now if you order through the Shake Shack app. Jacob's back. Another check of the first one forecast details on the cool down. After the very warm weather we felt over the weekend, Jacob. Yeah, it's going to cool down pretty quick. And before you know, it, it's going to feel like fall across our area. But we also have the chance for some rain tonight. Now, we actually have already been seeing some light showers across our area, but we could possibly see some thunderstorms, maybe even some severe storms. Now, for tomorrow, it's going to be mild during the morning hours, but temperatures will peak right around noon for Madison, and it's going to cool down throughout the evening and the cool temperatures will continue, especially for Thursday and portions of next week. Now, looking at the current radar, we are fairly clear across our area, but looking off to the south and west, you can see some of those storms moving into our area, and some of the storms could be severe. Looking at the severe weather outlook for tonight, we do have a marginal risk for our entire area, although we aren't expected to see widespread severe weather. Each, each part of our area has the chance to see a severe storm. Now, we're not expected to see a lot of severe weather, and as the storms move further north and east, they are going to dissipate a little bit. So, Platteville, Prairie du Chien, areas in the southwestern portion of the state have the best chance to see the severe weather. And then as we get towards the later overnight hours, we're only going to see some very light scattered showers or storms. It is possible that we may continue to see a storm that could, that could produce some severe weather later into the overnight hours, but the later we get, the less likely we will see uh, the severe weather. As 
as we go into tomorrow, we are going to see more scattered showers, possibly even some storms, although there is no severe weather risk tomorrow. But we could see some on and off showers really throughout the entire day. This this threat of rain will continue throughout the afternoon and evening, even into the overnight hours for Wednesday. And then by Thursday morning, although we are going to be very cloudy, it looks like we are going to be dry, but temperatures will be a lot cooler by then. So for tonight, we'll see a low temperature of around 70. Still going to be a bit muggy tonight. Very warm lows as the humidity will be pretty high, but considering it's the overnight hours, don't have to worry too much about the heat index. And then tomorrow is a bit tricky in terms of the high temperatures because the high temperatures will likely occur around noon for Madison, but places to the west it will occur earlier. So those high temperatures may only be in the 60s because once the cold front moves through tomorrow, temperatures are going to decrease throughout the day and places near the lake may actually see high temperatures in the 80s as the cold front will take longer to get to those areas. So if you're out west, you'll see cooler temperatures earlier. If you're in the central portion of the state a little bit later, and then the eastern portion of the state will be the latest and then for Thursday, Thursday, it's going to be a lot cooler with high temperatures across our entire area only in the 60s and it's also gonna be cloudy on Thursday. So it's definitely gonna feel like fall on Thursday and for the most part temperatures aren't going to change all that much from Thursday. They will they will warm up a bit for the weekend, but still a lot more comfortable than the last couple of days. And then as we look towards Sunday, we do have another chance of rain at night and that will continue into Monday. But for the most part, we really aren't going to see a lot of rainfall beyond Monday with temperatures consistently in the upper 60s and lower 70s. Coming up in sports, after an electric week one win, where do the Badgers land in this week's AP poll? We've got that answer and much more next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now first warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. When a clean, shiny truck pulls up in front of your house, yes, everyone starts clapping because everyone is happy. And that's why they all start dancing. Woo! <laughs> Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Looks like they finally got rid of that trip hazard. They pump it full of mud? It ain't mud, Jack. Where are the patched holes? Where's the splashed mud? It ain't mud, Jack. Concrete lifting technologies can quickly raise and level any concrete surface using cutting-edge foam technology made in Wisconsin. Fast and accurate and eco-friendly. How did those guys do it? Where are the holes? Where's the mud? It ain't mud, Jack. Dot com. For 46 years straight, more of you have trusted Ford F-Series trucks to help save the day. Stretch the weekend, haul, or tow, just about anything, anywhere. That's because they're built Ford Tough. And it's why Ford F-Series are America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. And for that, we thank you. Because this isn't just about our capability, it's about yours. Postmenopausal women with HR-positive, HER2-negative metastatic breast cancer are living longer with Cascali. So long live family time, long live dreams, and long live you. Cascali is a pill proven to help women live longer when taken with an aromatase inhibitor. And Cascali helps preserve quality of life. So you're not just living, you're living well. Cascali can cause lung problems or an abnormal heartbeat, which can lead to death. It can cause serious skin reactions, liver problems, and low white blood cell counts that may result in severe infections. Avoid grapefruit during treatment. Tell your doctor right away if you have new or worsening symptoms, including breathing problems, cough, chest pain, a change in your heartbeat, dizziness, yellowing of the skin or eyes, dark urine, tiredness, loss of appetite, abdomen pain, bleeding, bruising, fever, chills, or other symptoms of an infection, a severe or worsening rash, are or plan to become pregnant or breastfeeding. Long live hugs and kisses. Ask about Kiskali and long live life. I'm the one and only Spider-Man. At least that's what I thought. Remember, what makes you different is what makes you Spider-Man. At Overture Center, October 4th. Tickets at Overture.org. You work hard enough. Take a load off this Labor Day with new appliances from Brothers Main. Celebrate the holiday with unbeatable deals on top brands like GE Appliances, Cafe, Hotpoint, and higher. Don't miss out. Shop the Labor Day sale at Brothers Main today. When a clean, shiny truck pulls up in front of your house, yes! 
everyone starts clapping because everyone is happy. And that's why they all start dancing. Woo! <laughs> Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. With 25 games left in their season, the Brewers have a two and a half game lead over the Cubs in the NL Central. But after losing two straight, they look to get back on track in Pittsburgh tonight. Pick things up in the fifth inning. Brewers lead at one nothing. One on with no outs and Andrew Monasterio with the dish who cranks up the volume on the Pirates, rips it into no man's land in the left center corner. It pinballs around for a little bit, which would allow Andrew to get all the way to third for an RBI triple. And then later in the inning, two on for Mark Canna who smokes one through the infield. It would score one and then another run would come home to score on the error. Brewers ride a six run fifth inning to a win. How about it? Seven to three the final. Jordan Turner is one of Wisconsin's biggest impact players on defense, but after being ejected in Bucky's season opener for targeting, the linebacker will miss the first half of their Week 2 matchup at Washington State. Fickle appealed the ruling, but doesn't expect to win, leaving Jake Cheney as Wisconsin's next man up. And for Fickle, that's not a problem. He thinks Cheney's fantastic, but it will hurt Wisconsin's depth in the first half. The good fortune for us is I think we got three starting inside linebackers. You know, I wouldn't say we have two. I wouldn't say that Jake Cheney is not a starter and wasn't a starter. Um, so I don't think we miss, um, you know, a whole lot. Obviously, obviously, we miss Jordan. But I don't think that you're like, oh, you're out of a starter. Um, what we do ha don't have is the depth. We don't have the ability to roll as much. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's tough. And after winning that season opener over Buffalo 38-17, Wisconsin didn't move a muscle in the Week 2 AP poll. They're still at 19, while Georgia remained at the top spot. Michigan, Alabama, Florida State, and Ohio State round out that top five, and the Big Ten has four teams in the top 25. And tonight, sports director Zach Hanley was joined by Wisconsin running back Braylon Allen live at Buck and Honey's in Sun Prairie. News 3's new sports show brings you weekly past the X's and O's and closer to your favorite athletes than you've ever been. The Wisconsin Huddle airs each Friday at 6.30 right here on News 3 Now. To the soccer pitch where Verona, sixth ranked, hosted Madison East in a good old-fashioned footy game. How about it? Wildcats trying to force the issue, but Kyle Bauer from the Pergolders is able to keep it back. And then in the 21st minute, Verona on the attack. Misael Verhan Hernandez feeds up to Jesse Ward, who pulls out the Penanka. How about that? He finds the back of the net. What a goal and a nasty move from the senior. That would be the difference maker. Verona holds on to win it. One to nil, the final. We'll be right back. Spans and Barrels Tour invades the Alliant Energy Center on Saturday, September 16th, featuring bull riding, barrel racing, ultimate bullfighting, with a live performance by Wiley Green. Bull Spans and Barrels Tour, Saturday, September 16th, 7 p.m. at the Alliant Energy Center. Culligan Water takes pride in being your local water experts. We live here, work here, and dedicate our lives to improving our area's water. We deliver the world's best water treatment and the industry's best service to you. Culligan Water, your local water experts. Hey, hey, you're tuned in to Better Halves. Skip, I love my hometown, and I want a health plan that feels the same way. So what are your favorite local date spots? Oh, um, yeah, I know, like, like all the date spots in Eclair. Ooh. Jane, I'm Steve from Security. I've lived here in Wisconsin my whole life, and that means I understand your health coverage needs better. By the way, Doug, it's Eau Claire. I have a dozen Eclairs in my dressing room. Salon Pos, makers of powerful pain relief patches for 89 years, believes in continuous improvement, like rounded corners that resist peeling, with an array of active ingredients and sizes to relieve your pain. Salon Pos, it's good medicine. A 33-year-old woman has fenders and a new headlight installed on her bike, but the parts are badly designed and cause her to crash. She never walks again. She decides to hire Habish, Habish & Rotier, and she receives $14.5 million. The Habish team negotiates with the headlight manufacturer in Germany, the Fender company in Hong Kong, the Fender designer in Madison, and the bike shop in Seattle. It is literally the opposite of one phone call and a quick settlement. Habish, Habish & Rotier. National reputation, hometown service. I'm a martial artist, a skydiver, a pilot, and all of them require your feet to work. 
get up in the morning and it felt like I was standing on marbles on my heel. When I went into the Good Feet store, the fitting was personalized. It was all about me. You put in the art supports and your day becomes better and the sun shines and the unicorns run by and you know, it's a good life. I'm Randy and that's my Good Feet story. Champion Windows is celebrating our 70th anniversary with our best sale of the year. Right now, buy two Comfort 365 windows and get two free. Don't sweat over high energy bills. Buy two, get two free. Call or schedule your free estimate online at GetChampionWindows.com. The Final Drive High School Football Coverage, Fridays at 10. Well, before we go tonight, Stoughton police arrested a 20-year-old man last Friday night after he fled from them on moped. Of course, it didn't take long for the officer to catch up and arrest the man for eluding. He was also cited for multiple traffic violations. And as for why he tried to flee, well, he reportedly told the officer that it was, quote, worth a shot. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. I, I thought Thank this was you. a serious story at first. Yeah, but this is an interesting way to close out the show. See, I was really good with my dramatic read. You are. Nice. I was, See, I was, you I was hanging on every word. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, final check of the forecast. Yeah, we are seeing some storms in Iowa moving towards southwestern Wisconsin. Once the storms enter Wisconsin, they're going to dissipate as they move off to the east and northeast. So the central portion of the state probably won't see any severe weather, but it is possible we could see a severe storm or two. All this will occur during the overnight hours. Not going to impact too many plans, but don't be surprised if you hear a few rumbles of thunder and they might wake you up during the overnight hours. Now, as far as temperatures, it will be mild during the morning tomorrow, but then we are going to drop during the afternoon. And then Thursday, we'll see high temperatures only in the 60s. And for the most part, we're not going to see the temperatures rise all that much. For the weekend, they'll be in the upper 70s, but we're going to consistently see temperatures peak in the lower 70s, upper 60s. Fall is just about here, at least the forecast says so. All right, Jacob, thank you. Thanks for joining us at 10. Do something good, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.